In this video, we'll take a look at some good practices for accessing PLC data from an HMI. Often we're met with a choice of whether to hack something together that'll work for now, or to engineer a well-defined solution with traits like good performance, reliability, maintainability, and portability. The basic practice we'll be discussing is setting aside a block of standard memory in the PLC to serve as an interface between the PLC and the HMI. For reference in this video, we'll call it an interface table. This is in contrast to a more ad hoc approach of just pointing the HMI objects directly at whatever data and I.O. in the PLC we're interested in, some memory here, some control registers there, some inputs, some outputs, and so forth. The interface table is an alternate approach where the HMI reads from and writes to a well-defined area of PLC memory. The PLC program, in turn, services the interface table by mapping that table data to the appropriate areas. Importantly, this allows the PLC program to maintain control over the HMI's access. Why might it be worthwhile to do this? One reason is performance, particularly as related to the efficiency of communication between the HMI and PLC. Simply put, data that is less scattered leads to fewer data packets clogging your bus or your network, and therefore potentially better system responsiveness. Data packets or message frames carry a lot of overhead unrelated to your data. Concentrating HMI data into an interface table results in more data per packet, and hence fewer packets and less overhead. Next up is reliability. The main point here involves keeping the PLC which is engineered to be extremely reliable, in control wherever possible. You may be able to directly control a PLC's outputs with an HMI, but having the HMI instead write to the interface table allows the PLC program to maintain a, a degree of control. The PLC program can, for example, implement an HMI enable bit whose value could depend on things like completing a startup sequence, uh, the current COM status, or various safety checks. By the same method, the PLC program can referee the HMI's reading of data, particularly I.O., ensuring its validity prior to enabling HMI access. Let's take a closer look at this simple implementation of an interface table in an RS Logix 500 application. I've got a table of bits here, which serves as my HMI interface table in this toy program. For example, the HMI can write to these bits to control PLC outputs. If the running PLC program has enabled HMI control, then a simple subroutine copies the bits from the HMI interface table to the outputs every scan. In this case, we've copied bit by bit because we like to be very explicit when allowing HMI control of outputs. In servicing the HMI reads of I.O., we just move or copy entire words of input and output bits to the interface table for HMI access. The development and maintenance of a system is determined in large part by its design and its documentation. If we take kind of a haphazard approach to how we interface the HMI to the PLC, we may end up making more work for ourselves or others down the line. If we want to make even minor changes to the PLC program, which happen to affect the areas accessed by the HMI, then the HMI or HMIs will have to be reprogrammed as well and hopefully the person changing the PLC program will be aware of the affected HMIs, both local and remote. However, if we've implemented an HMI interface table in the PLC, there may need to be no change to the HMIs, only a remapping of the interface table in the PLC to the various PLC data areas affected. The presence of the interface table in the PLC code or configuration is itself a kind of documentation, if you will, making it clear to those modifying the PLC program that there are HMI requirements to be considered. But ideally, the interface table is described in a document that is kept up to date as changes are made to the system design, HMI functionality, and the PLC implementation. This is particularly useful when the development or maintenance of the system entails more than one person working on it. 
The interface table is a clear method of communication between those working on the PLC program and those programming the HMIs. With a well-documented interface table, those working on HMI code don't need to know about every little change being made to the PLC program and don't have to be concerned about exactly how, for example, the I.O. is implemented, be it embedded, expansion, or remote I.O., etc. And even if you are the only one programming the system and somehow are the only one who ever has to maintain it, you'll appreciate not having to relearn the intricacies of the PLC program and I.O. structure just to make a small change to the HMI program. Finally, the approach we're advocating here will make your designs more portable, which is to say reusable. This comes into play if you want to reuse your code with new hardware. Using a well-designed interface between the HMI and PLC, as we've been discussing, decouples to some degree the PLC and HMI configurations, allowing a more standardized approach that is less dependent on the peculiarities of the particular hardware, making it easier to upgrade to new models or brands, as is often required by cost, changing company policies, or obsolescence. Okay, to recap, we've been talking about using a well-defined and documented data table, or tables as the case may be, as an interface between the PLC and HMI. Now, this approach is not novel. In a generalized sense, it's used in many areas of engineering to improve technical solutions. In software engineering, it's called encapsulation and is used for the same reasons we've been discussing here. Performance, reliability, maintainability, and portability.